I've been making videos for a while now, nearly three and a half years to be exact, and I can confirm to you that despite all of this time, it's still never fun to start an episode on a down note, if not downright depressing. But unfortunately, that is where we are right now, because this episode is going to be a bit depressing when compared to the last episode, because I'm pretty sure this series has peaked early with the Capo Caco debacle that happened in the last episode. But despite that, we are here, we are back again, and we are ready to begin our second season with the Espo Eagles. Capo Caco leading the way in a way, if not for, of course, the main defensive prospect that we have down in the AHL, that being Petri Nokalainen, some of the other players that we picked up already, and two players in particular, both of whom have a little bit of trade value, Miko Koivu and Valtteri Filpula. Now, I talked about at the end of the first episode that I was wanting to do something a little bit different, because as you may have seen with the Edmonton and Anaheim Twitch series that I've also been uploading over here, again, yes, that's why the videos are so long, they don't have to be for everybody, if you don't have time to watch it, don't worry, they're short term, and only lasting until the end of February at the most anyway. That said, I mentioned at the end of that first episode of this series, of course, that I was wanting to limit my ability to flip players, because if I don't, things can get a little bit out of control, as it's so easy to fleece the AI on trades, on hard difficulty, it doesn't matter, with the way the draft works this year, and accurate scouting, especially in a series like this, where we know exactly how good every Finnish player is, it would be way too easy for me to just simply be able to sign Miko Koivu and immediately flip him, which is why... When he has a two-year deal, I mentioned that I wanted to incorporate some randomness into this. And that is exactly what we are going to do. So for every acquisition like this, I am going to spin the wheel and we are going to see just how long I have to stay loyal to this player. In Miku Koivu's case, it's either going to be zero and I'm allowed to trade him this season, one, and I'm not allowed to trade him until the end of the season, or I have to stay loyal to him for all two years of the contract, which would be the worst case scenario by far. It is the same thing as well for Valtteri Filpula, as he has the exact same contract length. So let's go to the lovely world of Wheel Decide, the same generic website we use for a set plan. And of course, there you see the autofill for the players that we have. But 0, 1, and 2, pretty straightforward. This is for Miko Koivu. How long do we, stay, do we have to stay loyal to the legend? And that is not good. I am not going to be allowed to trade Miko Koivu. And he is obviously the most valuable of the two. That is a second round pick, if not maybe a little bit more, that is completely down the drain. But I like it. I like it. Miku Koivu will not, Miko Koivu will not be traded. But what about Valtteri Filpula? Am I going to be allowed to trade him at all? Oh my god. I want to I wanna claim that the wheel is rigged. But I know it's not. Valtteri Filpula and Miko Koivu will be staying here for the duration of their contracts. Which means I am going to have to do very well in this draft and very well in free agency because we don't have any other valuable pieces here, really. And I'll show you the trade value for players right now, and that is why that is such a big deal. Obviously, Nokalainen and Hainola aren't going anywhere, and every other player here is a prospect outside of Filpula, and from there, the value drops off. Rodinen, we might be able to get something for, but it wouldn't be major. We are basically committed to the players that we have right now, and that is that is rough, but it is that level of randomness. It might be a bit gimmicky, but I have no choice. And again, if you haven't been able to catch uh, the latest episodes of like Edmonton and Anaheim, Feel free to check those out, because those series are me just sitting back, having fun with the game, no limitations, 
and you can imagine. I mean, again, it's not the most difficult thing to sit here and exploit the AI. It's far too easy, as a matter of fact, when it comes to free agent signings, uh, the draft, and of course exploiting the fact that teams with champion status don't want to keep their you know, first round picks. So if they've acquired extra first round picks, you can always get those picks for cheap. And of course, my big thing that I was talking about tonight on the most recent stream, it would have been the Anaheim stream, so the most recent episode of that, which either would have been up yesterday or would go up alongside this video, depending on when this is uploaded. The big topic of conversation I had for one of the changes I'd love to see the NHL is the fact that trade values absolutely need to be addressed. That is arguably the main reason why it is so easy to fleece the AI in this game as we get our first ooh, back-to-back wins. Not bad, boys. Not bad. That is why it is so easy to fleece the AI in this game. I'll give you an example. Tampa Bay, always champion status, right? They don't they want to get pieces that can help them win the cup. They're willing to trade first round picks. But say I have a medium elite goalie who I know isn't going to develop. They don't have any interest in him, but his trade value doesn't drop. It stays the same, even though Tampa has no interest in him. So, of course, I can exploit that, use his value to trade for the pick that they don't want, and then there you go, I get a great pick for a player that I know isn't going to make it. It needs to be, and whether or not you have it be different difficulties, right? So, you have your normal casual experience, or you have hardcore franchise settings where the AI is just super ruthless, and it adjusts these trade values, I shouldn't be able to exploit a trade like that using a player that a team doesn't want to get a good pick. If I offer that goalie to Tampa, the value should show up as like worthy of a third or fourth round pick because they have no interest in them. And that leads to a series like Draft to Glory, where I completely eliminate the aspect of trading and free agent signings so that I can't exploit the game. All I can do is just draft the best players available and hope for the best. When you have a series like with what I've been doing with Edmonton and Anaheim, when the cuffs are off, again, it gets kind of crazy. Or think back to rebuilding Hockey Town a few years ago where there were no limitations. So there's there's been a lot of thought put into this about me wanting to really challenge myself even more. And it's a shame that for something like this, I mean, obviously, like a draft of glory, or even this, even a Nations United here, or a Nation United, as this is called, it's still limiting myself to using just Finnish players. That's pretty much what the majority of my series end up being. I still have the straightforward series. Of course, the Vegas series that just wrapped up was a more straightforward series where I was allowed to trade and sign free agents, and even that ended up being a bit over the top. So I think I'm going to continue with this idea of, I guess, the wheel of loyalty in terms of if I sign somebody, if I trade for somebody, I'm going to set it to, like, okay, I'm going to be loyal to this guy. So every signing that I make, every trade that I make, there needs to be purpose to that. And more than likely, when it comes to trade values and trading for certain pieces I already kind of do it to begin with, but the thought of only going after what a team puts on the trade block, number one, just for the sake of, I guess, fairness, but secondly, because it is easier to get those pieces. And like I said, if you look at a team that has champion status, for example, whatever, in one of the test runs with Anaheim or Edmonton, I don't remember which, uh, Ottawa ended up with Braden Point as an RFA because Tampa didn't have the money to re-sign him. Ben Harper's on waivers, no thank you. So Tampa, of course, then at the draft, wants to trade Ottawa's pick, which ended up being a top three pick. Guess how easy it was to get that top three pick? Case in point. So I'm trying to put some different, you know, some different spins on series moving forward, literally with the wheel. I think that covers everything. A couple of ideas kind of ran together in that rant. But it's okay, because it's getting us through the majority of the season, where, again, after knowing that we're committing to Miko Koivu and to Valtteri Filpula for all two years of their contracts, we have nothing we can do. No players that we really want to trade, nothing we can do until we get to the draft and the off season. Those will be the two big moments for us to try and capitalize on making something 
happen. So I might be a bit selective in terms of like, oh, trading. Am I allowed, you know, if I like trade up or trade down? Although normally I only trade up if teams want to get rid of the picks anyway, because again, they're easier to get. But when it comes to like trading prospects as well, we'll see. And there's that debate too for say a medium elite goalie who has a lot of trade value, but he's 22 and a 57. And I know he's not going to develop, but I could easily trade him for a pick. Maybe I'll leave that down to a random spin as well. Maybe I won't trade that player at all because it feels cheap. It sucks that I have to do this is the point that I have to essentially handcuff myself to try and make this difficult with all of these gimmicks. But that is that is what franchise mode is for me, unfortunately. But hopefully, hopefully we can get it into a better state in the near future. That would be nice. I want a more challenging franchise mode, and I'm sure some of you do as well. We have won 16 games this year. 16, 58, and 8 were the Eagles this year. Helsinki managed to pick up 32 wins. Not too shabby for them, given the state of that roster. Let's see what happened this year. Sebastian Repo. Oof, 36 points for the team leader. That is rough. Some teams still have one more game to play, if not two. So we'll sim one extra day here. And then we'll take a look at the stats around the league. So let's see what happened this season. I again forgot to look at like, oh, what happened on deadline day or whatever. But that is what it is. I'm not too concerned, really. Of course, we'll see like cup winning teams and we'll look and be like, oh, this guy. When we look at player stats, it's like, oh, this guy went here. But Vancouver wins the Pacific in year two. San Jose, Edmonton, and Anaheim all make the playoffs in the Central. Colorado, Detroit, Dallas, and St. Louis win. And again, this is without a fantasy draft. In the Atlantic, Toronto, Buffalo, Boston, and Ottawa make the playoffs. New Jersey, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Washington make it out of the Metro. Colorado, the best team in the league. The worst team in the league, shockingly, was us. Averaging one and a half goals for per game. Three, five, seven against, obviously, the worst two numbers in the league. As far as player stats are concerned, I don't think uh, Kako is going to be winning the Calder with 31 points and a minus 57. Unfortunately, would have been nice though to trade Philippula and Koivu. And to answer the question that I know you're asking, he's up to an 84, which is pretty nice, especially if we can get some good help. Of course, I have gone through with the roster editing and added in quite a few prospects. We do have some good finish prospects coming up in years two, three, and four. We just need that lottery luck on our side, and hopefully we get it. But you see our leading scorers there. And goaltending-wise, uh, Alexi Niemi was pretty damn good, actually. We might have been able to win a few more games had he played. And then down in the AHL, for the hell of it, Gibson and Rusu both did all right. Defensively, Nokalainen with 21 points, 137 penalty minutes, though. We might have to double-check what his fighting tendency is. 74 fight skill, the discipline at an 84. Can't help but think he fights all the time, though. Can't help but think. And also, uh, again, I didn't even get a good look at it. He is still a 78. That's a little bit worrisome. Just a little bit. Let's go and take a look around the league here, though, shall we? Brent Burns led the way for defenseman. Barry Carlson also up there. Goal-scoring leader was Brent Burns. OEL also broke 20. Forward-wise, Nathan McKinnon, 104 points. Line and Rantanen also did well. Wheeler was up there. Ovechkin, Eichel, Nylander, McDavid, and Stammer. As far as the goal-scoring king, it was McKinnon. Ovi was the only other player to break 50. You also had guys like Besser and Hoffman up there. Best plus minus for the hell of it was Rantanen at a 47. The worst was minus 74. <laughs> Miko Koivu. Damn. Damn. Any other interesting thing to look at? Maybe face-offs really quickly. I was wondering late, you know, recently, as far as people were running, like, oh, how important are face-offs? Well, Sasha Barkov on an 82 won quite a few. Not seeing anybody below an 82, though. So to answer your question, do face-offs matter in the sim? apparently. But these are also the centers, the number one centers, who would have been taking the most face-offs. So you have that going for you as well. Goaltenders! Let's see what we have. Varlamov won the most games in terms of save percentages. They were decent this year. Vassy went to Philly. Damn. Philadelphia. Celebrating in the streets. He's also going to win a Calder, or a Calder, a Vesna, more than likely. Calder would be amazing. Varlamov, though, has a good shout to win it. I'll be intrigued. If my vote would go to Varlamov, though, 
more games played, still had the same save percentage, lower goals against average for Vassy. In terms of the Calder, let's take a look, and it's probably going to be Jack Hughes or Martin Nakash. Yeah, my vote would go to Hughes for the 27 goals. Sam Steele was also up there, Martin Kaut, all over 40. For rookie goaltenders, do we have anybody who started quite a few games? I know people probably want me to look at goalie goals as well, and it might. Di Pietro. Whew. He and Connor Ingram both did well. Di Pietro up to an 83 for whatever reason. After editing his uh, his potential and bumping up his overall a bit, he just continually develops like an absolute madman in this game for me. I don't know why, but it is what it is. Di Pietro and Demko, not a bad future tandem. Unless the real-life Canucks continue to throw those two to the Wolves, in which case, you know, oh, they're only a few points out of a playoff spot, Tuggy. Well, you know, still, let's let's be honest here, okay? If you are the Canucks, do you want to make the playoffs this year? The owners do. They've been wanting to make the playoffs every year because playoff money. But if you're a fan, wouldn't you rather have another half-decent pick? I mean, I get it. Oh, it'd be great to be back in the playoffs. Would it, though, to probably lose in the first round? But Vegas made it to the cup final. Anything's possible. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I got no counter argument for that. Checkmate. You beat me. You beat me. I haven't looked at the draft class intentionally because I don't want to get my hopes up. I want to wait to see what happens on draft day, what the lottery looks like. I don't even want to look at what we might be dealing with. So we won't. We will stay here. St. Louis wins the cup in year two. Interesting is one word that could be used, I suppose. <laughs> Let's take a look at the journey that the Blues had to get there. They ended up beating Vancouver in six, Edmonton in seven, Dallas in six, and then beat Buffalo in six. The Ryan O'Reilly Bowl. And the Blues win it. The Calder Cup went to the Rockford Ice Hogs. They beat the Devils in five, I believe it was. I honestly don't know. I looked rather quickly. Question is, what does a Stanley Cup winning team look like? Apparently, Jason Pominville went off in the playoffs. Perron, Steen, and are there really any differences? Richard Ponick is on the squad. I don't think there are really any differences. They ended up with Thomas Vanek. That's about it for the offense. The defense is exactly the same, barring the addition of Derek Engeland. And goaltending-wise, Jake Allen with a 9 39 save percentage. Okay, sure. <laughs> Who's to argue with it? Vegas wins in year one. St. Louis wins in year two. Nathan McKinnon won the Art Ross and the Hart. Ty Berry won the Norris. Lady Bing to McKinnon. The Calder to Martin Akash. Sorry, Jack Hughes. Con Smythe to Jake Allen. I think Nakash had a better plus minus. Otherwise, I don't know why the hell you'd give it to him. And plus minus is a terrible stat. Con Smythe to Jake Allen. The Vesna to Varlamov, the Jennings to Vassy. As we have Kal Kaltiva, Kaltiva. K won the Masterton, which basically goes to you're the worst player, congrats. Nothing says perseverance like not quitting. Kopitar wins the Selkie, McKinnon, the Ted Lindsay, and the Rocket Richard. An amazing season for Nathan McKinnon. Down in the AHL, Cody Glass put up the most points. Nick Dowd was the league MVP. I believe that's Evan Barrett scored the most goals. Riley, uh, Riley Tufty, rookie of the year. Best defenseman was Ryan Murphy. Carter Hart wins goaltender of the year. Jack Campbell was the MVP of the playoffs. So good year for Carter Hart. You have to wonder, though, with Vassy being there, what's going to happen to Carter Hart's development throughout the course of this series? Could be interesting to find out. That said, that said, did I show you the jerseys for the team, by the way? I don't think I did. Let's take a look at that really quickly. I feel like I might have, but I can I can show you the whole shebang. The whole shebang. So the arena is based off of the real world arena. There's not really one that's small enough, but you know. Let's take a look. I didn't do an alternate jersey, but I mean literally they're just based off of Finland's jerseys. So, you know. Nothing too crazy. I like that one a little bit more. I didn't put a logo on it. Because, you know, you can't do text because people would type stupid shit. And the EA doesn't want to please it online, so we don't even have it as an offline feature. Draft lottery, please. Please. Pretty please. Drum roll. No drum roll. Please. Ah. Tampa beat us again. Jesus. 
Arizona also jumps. The question is, is that going to cost us a really good player? We might still be able to get Anton Lindell. We might. Simon Tyval is there as well. We're going to get somebody good, but Anton Lindell is available. You know what people are going to say? They're going to debate, well, fucking uh, Perfetti, Byfield, Byante, Top Five. Uh, who cares? Lucas Raymond should be better. Oh, boy. Anton Lundell might not fall. It is the Lafreniere draft. Arizona wins that. I don't want to call Simon Tyval my silver medal, but he would be in this instance. As Marion Gavrick and Zdeno Char retire, Chris Kunitz as well, David Backus, that would be very helpful for the Bruins cap situation. But Chara, Ron Hainsey retired out in Anaheim. Goaltending lies, Peter Brudai and Mike McKenna. Call it a call it a day, call it a career. And a lot of players just became scouts. Also, Chara retired in Buffalo. I'm gonna be sick to my stomach. Let's see how this draft goes. I think we covered everything as far as the stats. There's not much else to do. It is draft day. The question is, will Tampa screw us over for the second year in a row? With the number one pick, the Coyotes take Alexi Lafreniere. Tampa, don't do this to me. I hate you. With every fiber of my being, I hate you. I hate you so much. So much. We are destined for like an Eastern Conference final, and I hope we stomp them into the ice. Anton Lundell goes to Tampa, which means we are going to have to rely on my silver medal, Mr. Casper, Simon Tyval. No, I am not willing to try and trade down because I really don't have the assets to trade back up. I know I could get an extra third or something if someone else goes with Gundler or Delamont. That's not even a question. Simon Tyval. I know someone was saying, isn't he a winger? There was mixed information. That's why he's a center. It doesn't really matter. He's still really good. And we have a you know future number one center here next to Capo Caco. Miko Koivu comparison, which is perfect. Casper, welcome aboard. 77 medium elite. So he's not that much worse than Lundell at this point. Of course, in years two, three, and four, if you add prospects to the game, they will improve before their draft. So these might not exactly be the overalls that I set them to. You can always check the roster editing video or the doc that has continued to be up, uh, updated. It's going to make a video about that as well. We're not going to have the ability to trade back up into the first round. We will see what happens. On Noah Delamont to Los Angeles. Gundler to Chicago. Cole Perfetti. Quentin Byfield. Jamie Drysdale to Calgary. Stranges to the Islanders. Tutu's computer generated. Marco Rossi also to the Kings. They've done pretty well. McClellan to Vegas. Lucas Raymond to Anaheim, Alex Holtz to Columbus, Peterson's real, Rochette is real, Barron, Kruger's not, Cole Sillinger is, and Keaton, that's a great steal for Toronto. Great steal for Toronto. Caden Goulet off the board, and I feel like there were a couple of more Finns that went off the board there. The question is, do we have anybody in the second round? We might not. <laughs> oh, Canada. That's a lot of Canadians. Jesus. Twominen, though. Mika Twominen. Okay. That could work out pretty well for us here because we can move down over 20 spots and still probably get him. Luomala is not looking that great. But depending on who else we pick up here, Viacola is there as well. I'm going to sort by potential. And let's see. Oof. Kervinen and Toskala. Two great steals for us later on in this draft. Okay, we can do some damage here. We can do some damage. So again, we can afford to move down roughly 20 picks. I'm not going to move down all the way. Let's try to make a deal with Dallas. Just to make sure nobody goes off the board to steal them from us. We'll try to get the 50th overall selection for the 33rd. They don't want it, but I don't care. Because I don't feel like that's necessarily cheap. You know? I don't feel like that's overly cheap. Uh, the pick hoarding aspect that I'm going to try to pull off here might be a little bit cheap. I'm going to try to pick up a fourth and a seventh to move back. What is that? 17 spots? I don't feel like that's asking for too much. There we go. And if anything, I feel like I undersold that a little bit and could have pick hoarded a little bit more. So let's hope who I wanted is still here. With the 50th overall selection. I can't imagine he's off the board. Perfect. Mika Twominen. 
welcome aboard. And we could potentially have a left wing on the top line in the future. A Mikhail Backlund comparison. Beautiful. So Twilminen, welcome aboard. 63 overall at, what, 17 years old? That's a decent starting overall for sure. Who else was available here? I don't think it would have been worth trading up to get Luamala. We do need defensemen, but that's not one that's worth trading up for. So our next target, Ricola, is low six. I really don't like that potential this year. So I think I'm going to avoid that. Uh, Lukas Vyskovsky, we can't even look at. Uh, Filpula, again, I don't like. I know he has good shooting. I hate low top six this year. Absolutely hate it. I mean, that is condemning someone to being third line at best for the most part in my experiences even if it is worth having. Holy Romania, Brett Dorsett. So the next player that I'm looking at here, we might be trading down far away. Tony Lapalainen is available because I'm not afraid to have this roster be filled out with you know, the veteran players that we can find on the free agent list. Not against that at all. Markinen, I'm not sure how good he is, unfortunately. But I'm not just going to take terrible players, especially if I have the ability to trade. I'm going to trade down. Essa Osplund, also not really worth it. How far down are we going to go here? Another medium bottom six that I'm not really digging at this point, i got to be honest. And then there's Kervinen, who's at 142, which is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So... I mean, if we trade out of the second round, out of the third, we can go down to the fourth round to play it safe. And that is exactly what we're going to do. But the question is, with that third and fourth round pick, is there anybody worth trading for? Or is it better to just get draft picks next year? And it's probably better... I mean, because we can trade straight out of the fourth round and go straight to the fifth round. With those picks, is it worth it to trade for anybody, any, you know, Finn who's currently on a different team? And the answer is probably no, as we'll continue to build through the draft and free agency. I don't think trading will be a factor in this series until much later, at least not consistently. So I am absolutely going to look to trade these next four picks. And hopefully I can find a team that's interested this time out. Anaheim is... But I need assurances that you're wanting to trade picks in 2022. That is the only way this is going to work. Or not 2022, 2021. In Arizona, they do want to make a move. However, they don't have their second. No, they do have their second. They have Washington's. That'll work. If I can get Washington's second next year, I'll take an extra two sixth this year. What about a second and a fourth next year and two sixth this year? You get a third and three fourth round picks. I feel like I could still add more to that and call it pick hoarding if you must, if you wish. Will that go through? Yes, it will. Had a feeling it would because of all the fourth round picks, but again, those fourth round picks mean nothing to us. I just picked this up an extra second round pick next year as Alex Holtz is already on the trade block. I just picked this up an extra second round pick next year, and that could go a long, long way. And at the very least, both teams wanted to trade those picks. I feel like that's fair. Let me know what you think. Was that already too much of a stretch? Was that already too cheap? Let me know. But obviously, we, we made that move to get picks for next year and still be able to draft Essa Kervinen, the 18-year-old low elite gem. The defense needs some work, but he has time. So he'll be the pick. After that, I'm not sure how far we're trading down, if at all. Toscolo is next at 164. And of course, you have all those players that EA added, which I'm pretty sure just I don't I don't even really know why the hell that happens, but it's super annoying. They're not eligible to us anyway. All right, so it's uh, pick 160, and this selection I would guess Unisalampa is finished, but you know. Not going to take the risk more than likely. Don't expect them to be that good. So we have our next two targets here sorted. Our next pick after this is not in the fifth round. It's okay, though. You know what? I'm going to try to trade up here, I think. 
wheeling and dealing to get the players that we need. We'll see if we can get this deal done with Minnesota. I'm going to use... I mean, we have two sixth round picks here. Is that enough to move up? Yes, it is. Quick and easy. Could have used some sevenths. We get the deal done. It's all that matters to me is we have our next two targets. Piorala will not be one of them. Let's go ahead and select Esser Kravinen out of JYP. Low Elite in the 55. Should have a good chance at developing. And with the 10th pick of the fifth round, 138th overall, we will go a little bit off the board just to make sure. Actually, it's a lot off the board. He's at 164. That's a tough one. So that right there is 140. Then we have 150. Ah, you know, I'm actually going to make another move. Now, it's for minor picks at the very least. I'm not doing anything too crazy. Had I paid a bit more attention for some reason, I thought he was 140, not 160. I'm still going to look to make this move. As we'll try to trade back a little bit. I'm not going to be able to get too much out of this. I'm going to look for like a seventh round pick next year just to get that deal done. Thank you very much, San Jose. Although that seventh round pick could be used quite efficiently in the future. Let's see who else we can get here. So it's the top talent that we have a chance of missing out on early on. But as long as our scouts continue to give me good information on players like Toscala, and as long as they develop, we're looking okay. Let me double check to see if there's anybody else left. If not, I will probably trade away the rest of our picks in this draft. And it's just the low top six, Vitainen, who I don't trust. Once you get beyond 200s, or at least for me as of late, once you get beyond 200s in the ranks, you can't even trust, you know, confirmed potentials. So the only other guy I'd probably be willing to take is that goalie right there, but he is projected 227, so I don't trust it. I think we're good. I think this draft is over and done with for us. We end up getting pretty much everybody we wanted. It was a can't, you know, can't lose situation, really with the top pick. I'm going to try to deal these picks and an extra seventh next year so that we don't have too many selections in that draft. I'm going to see if we can get like a fourth round pick away from, say, Anaheim. And hopefully that deal is done. And it is. Probably couldn't have gotten that much more. Maybe an extra fifth. But I'm good with that. So next year's draft is already shaping up to be a first round pick, of course. An extra second from Washington. An extra fourth from Anaheim and Arizona. We have Arizona's fifth, and that's it. So nothing too crazy overall, right? We move a lot. We end up with a lot of picks, but wheeling and dealing a little bit to end up with the players that we want and to secure some picks for next year. I don't think that was too far overboard. So we end up taking four players, Simon Taval, Twaminen, Kervainen, and Toskala in this draft. Quite a bit of space there between the top two and the bottom two. So the question as far as the resign phase is concerned is... How many players do I let go of with the hope of bringing in more people in free agency? And i got to be honest, I'm probably going to let go of the majority of players that I can, and then we'll look to bring in whoever else we can off the free agent list. I'll probably jump cut that as I fill out the roster with players who aren't as important, and will either be AHL fodder or guys that we're just going to, you know, event, well, yeah, pretty much AHL fodder, or guys that we put on the NHL lineup just in case we end up uh, needing players to play at the NHL level as opposed to, you know, being in the AHL and we have our prospects in the AHL. You get the point. Same way we set up the team this past season. So as far as the re-sign phase is concerned, I think, again, Eunice Corpisalo comes back. We have no choice. I'm going to try to sign him to, like, 1-2-5. And I think from there, Gibson, Niemi, Satari are all dropped and may come back if needed. We still have Rusu. Salminen is going to be dropped for obvious reasons. We took him in that expansion draft. And we still have... Who, I'm, let's be honest, I'm going to butcher his name. I'm not even going to try. Defensively, Tulola. He can come back. May, eh, I'm, he's not going to get that much better. I'm going to drop him for now. Odds are I'll re-sign him. Same thing with Mikola. The medium seventh. And Leetonen, former Pred, will drop him. And yeah, like all of those guys, I'm just letting them go. Like I'm not even going to release them anymore because I can just hit the button and skip past it. Hinola's not going to be signed. Our Masterton winner's not going to be signed. So yeah, all three of those guys are gone. You're gone. 
Is there anybody else? Lightamaki is going to be gone. Ackerman's going to be gone. So that's pretty straightforward, at least for now. Again, as far as the forwards are concerned, not seeing anybody else there worth signing. Even Linus Neiman's going to be on the way out. Neiman, Nyman, whatever way. Left wingers, those two are gone, including Koskin Korva. Center wise, Simon Tyval, of course, will end up being signed, just not yet, as Mr. Finland uh, will be released along with every other player you see there. So it's actually fairly straightforward, not a whole hell of a lot to do, not a whole hell of a lot of players to sign. It's just right now looking for the best finish free agents, and then, of course, I'll make the old jump cut to be able to fill out this roster with the ton of random free agents that we're going to have to sign. It's fairly straightforward. Fairly straightforward indeed. And of course, the scouting department is set. Could have gotten some upgrades, but they're all B-minuses at the very least. We'll be fine. So the big question is, do we have any big-time Finnish free agents? And it doesn't look like it. Goalie-wise, do we have anybody? Pekka Rene, yes! Even if it's for the express purpose of trading him, if we get lucky enough. Now here's the problem, right? He wants two years. I'm not going to be cheap and be like, one year, $10 million contract, because that's going to make him difficult to trade. And really, it wouldn't, because I could do one year, $10 million contract, retain half the salary, still deal him no problem for a ton of assets. I don't want to be cheap like that. I could easily do that, right? I want this to be a bit of a challenge, okay? So odds are we will still look to sign Pekka Rinne, and Ranta is not going to be a bad secondary option. Ranta and Rene as the pairing this year. That is a much improved setup and still probably wouldn't be enough to have us avoid, you know, being the worst place team. So Rene, at 37 years old, no other teams are interested. Oh boy. Do I go one year with the express purpose of trying to trade you? I have to, because we're not going to be competitive in time. I'm not going to offer him that much more. The most I would do is round up to seven. I mean, I have to I have to risk not being able to sign him. That's the thing. If I go one year, it might lessen the chance of me to be able to sign him because he wants two years. I'm going to go one year, seven mil, and hopefully he signs. I don't want to go any crazier than that. I'm not going to offer like more than a million more than what they're asking for. Even then, most of the time, I'm just going to round up. So let's go one year, seven mil. That's not an overly cheap offer. And if he signs, we'll have a 50-50 chance at being able to trade him at the deadline, which would be massive for us. So let's see if we can sign Rene. And then Ranta is probably going to be our long-term solution. It's up to an 88, by the way. I didn't even notice that. Jesus. So four years, I don't really have any desire to trade him. So four years to bring him up to 35 years old, which is fine. And I'm good to go six by four for Ranta. And hopefully he signs that. I'm tempted to go with a little bit more because obviously we can afford to do that. But I don't want to exploit the fact that I could be like, here's 15 million. You know, I don't necessarily want to do that. So I'd rather miss out on players by not being cheap than do every single thing I want to do by being cheap. So we're going to go 6x4 and hope that that is good enough. A little bit more than what he was asking for. So that's nice. In terms of prospects, Kuiper is probably not. <laughs> I'm going to guess, but it was worth looking. And for fringe goalies, Justice is there. Justice is served. Do we have any other fins aside from Justice? That is the real question, and the answer is yes. We have two medium fringe Finnish goalies. Justice Anunen, Anunen, however the hell you pronounce it. We'll be looking to sign him. We'll offer him the max ELC. Hopefully we get him. And Etu Makiniemi will also be signed, I hope. Both of them to ELCs. Good stuff. Good stuff there. If the goaltending situation works out for us, we would have five goalies signed and we wouldn't have to worry about bringing back like a 77 to fill out the roster. Defensively, do we have any major names? We do not. Not at all. That sucks. If 
but you can't win them all, especially when goaltending was as kind to us as it was. Do we have any prospects here? And I don't believe we do. We have two Swedes, that's about it. Medium sixes are at least worth looking at. There aren't that many, and to be honest, I don't think there were any fins. So, nothing helping us out there goaltending-wise. Some of the medium sevenths might end up being signed. No major signings, though, to speak of. And then forward-wise, again, nobody, unfortunately. Don't believe I'm missing anybody. I Yeah, there's nothing to really speak of, but what about forward prospects? There's a whole other question. Now, again, I don't like drafting low sixes, and unfortunately there's nobody there, unless Lucas Lee is somehow finish and he's not and of course Kuleshov won't be either so nothing there do we have any medium nines to speak of how many medium nines are on the board a lot holy hell there's a lot of medium nines okay is there anybody available Pontesaberg is Swedish yeah Stevenson Sadawi Lear Picar is not available I wish Let's see Bleakley Halalka Nordgren's got to be Swedish right Finish! Nicholas Nordgren. Third round pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. Welcome. Hopefully. No guarantees we end up getting him, but there's a decent chance because he's not the best prospect in the world. Pope, Hillis. Looks like the Blackhawks let go of a lot of players here. Kurashev, Jenik, Jens, Luke, or Locke is not available either. Yeah, he's going to be Swedish. He's also an RFA. Uh, Limblom? Oscar Limblom, also Swedish. Sissons. Okay. Well, there's at least one player there, which is pretty helpful. So we have five major contract offers out let's go ahead and see if we get these deals done and then i will fill out the roster and see you guys at the beginning of the next season justice has signed beautiful nordgren has signed maki niemi has signed now for the big names pecorine welcome aboard ranta welcome aboard five for five five for five good stuff good stuff indeed so as far as the contracts are concerned, I think for rookies, what do you guys think? Should I have freedom to sign rookies whenever, or to trade rookies whenever I want that are on their ELC? Or should I include the ELC? Let me know what you think, because then we'd have to spin the wheel a couple of times there. But as far as the goaltenders are concerned, holy ranta. We have to spin the wheel for Pekka and we have to spin the wheel for Ranta. So let's do it. Pecorine, it's either a 0 or a 1. A 50-50 shot. If it lands on 0, I'm free to trade him at the deadline. If it lands on 1, I have to stay with him for the entirety of the contract. It is a 1. We will not be trading Pecorine this season. He'll be here all year, which is a little bit rough. And then for Ranta... It is a four-year deal. So we will see. Will I have the ability to trade onto Ranta? How soon will I have the ability to trade Ranta? I won't. Wow, this wheel. No mercy. So we're not allowed to trade Ranta. We're not allowed to trade Rene. Not allowed to trade Felpula or Miko Koivu. So all four of our big free agent signings thus far are here for the duration of their contract, so get ready to see Antti Ranta for the next four years. We will not be trading him. He will be the goaltender for the Espo Eagles. I will see you guys in a moment as we get to the start of the season. After quite a bit of time, I am happy to report that the team is good to go for our third season. And in all honesty, we might end up being a little bit better than I would hope that we would be at this point as we're still heavily relying on top draft picks. But that is due to the risk of signing Pecorine because our goaltending tandem is now absolutely ridiculous. Before we get to that though, this is the team, the forward core at least, for this season top line of Henrik ha 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 ha. Miko Koivu, who of course will not be traded, and Valtteri Filpula, who will not be traded, both on expiring deals, and of course, 
Koivu dropped down two overall points because of course he did. We missed our window to be able to trade him, but that's okay. Second line, now 85 overall Cap Okako, who does have power play time, but he is going to start on the second line next to Saku, uh, Saku Amanahanan and Sebastian Repo. Third line of Marcus Hanakainen, Yori Laterra, and Mika Salamaki. Fourth line, Kali Kasila, Patrick Virta, and Kasper Simon Taival has made the roster. He is listed as a fourth line guy. So obviously the two key pieces there. There, Simon Tyval and Capo Caco, but that's not too bad after just two drafts. Defensively, it's a mix of yeah. Yanni Tulola and Vietti Vainio will be our top pairing. Nico Mikola and Yunus Litanen, who is back. Miko Lettinen is with Petri Nokalainen, who has made the squad as well. Now a top six guy. 79 overall, which isn't that bad. And then we get to the goaltending. 89 Rene, 88 Ranta. Neither of whom I can trade, which I'm okay with that. Rene signed for just the season, and then Ranta will take over. So, Rene, hope you enjoy playing in your home country for a year. <laughs> Healthy scratches, though. Yunus Korpisalo is just sitting there, as is Tamo Aaronen and Mikhail Sapahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahah